Hi, and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. Lego have now revealed all 20 of the Lego Ninjago Movie collectible minifigure series. Let's take a look at them. First up, we have Lloyd the Green Ninja in his casual outfit. He comes with a spoon and a white ceramic bowl with a traditional blue dragon print on it. I really like Lloyd's casual outfit. It seems we'll be getting lots of new clothing accessories with this theme. With a name like Jay Walker, there has to be some joke about him crossing the road in this movie. This casual version of the Blue Ninja comes complete with a selfie stick, along with a smartphone which has a print in that shows him taking a photo of himself. This is arguably the most generic minifigure in the series. He seems to be made up entirely of existing pieces recolored or reprinted, like his hairpiece which is the same as the Series 7 Hippie. I actually really like this minifigure. Seeing as we know there is a volcano within spitting distance of Ninjago City, is it safe to assume that Garmadon is living near or even inside the volcano in this movie? Like Casual Lloyd, he also comes with a spoon and bowl, our first hint that father and son might have more in common than they first realise. This is already my favourite minifigure of the series. Simply because I am 100% certain he is a reference to a Tori Hanzo from the movie Kill Bill, Volume 1. I absolutely love that the designers have found a way to get a Quentin Tarantino character into Lego form. I doubt he'll play a big part in the movie, this is likely just an easter egg, but it's a great nod to fans of the film and shows they've made this with a lot of love for all kinds of martial arts movies. This version of Nia is wearing the exact same training outfit we've seen in a few sets worn by some of the other ninjas already. That makes this figure a little underwhelming, but it's still a nice addition, and she comes with two wooden katanas which haven't been produced in that colour before. This one looks to be different to the other great white minifigures we've seen in some of the announced sets. The charcoal black and scorch marks give him a very volcano vibe. We can see his armour has some battle damage and his battery icon is showing low power. Could this be from a final battle scene later on in the movie? Judging by the number included in this one's name, I think she will end up most likely being a generic baddie rather than a character of any real significance. She's got quite a cool look to her though, including a brand new side parted hairpiece and an elaborate cape design. Judging by how young Lloyd's mum looks here, this design is likely based on a flashback scene. Perhaps when she first meets and falls in love with Garmadon. I love her brand new hairpiece which comes with a pair of chopsticks in. I'm really excited by the oriental aesthetic they've plastered across this theme so far. This minifigure doesn't seem to be any sort of special variant on the ones we've seen in the sets already. The only significant detail is the box of conflicts that comes as his accessory, possibly tied into the running gag from the short film which saw him fight a chicken. Here's Garmadon in his traditional samurai armour. Like Master Wu, he doesn't seem to be a special variant, but it's nice the fans will be able to pick him up at a cheap price. The third Garmadon minifigure in the series. That might be a bit much, but I love how silly he looks with his hair, sunglasses, and smart casual outfit. He comes with a printed tile of a volcano surrounded by a white picket fence, again suggesting this might be his home. Could this design also be from the same flashback scene as Misako minifigure? This version of Zane is wearing an adorable Christmassy sweater complete with knitted robots, as well as a hiking backpack. If I had to guess, I'd say this would be Zane's look really early on in the movie before he's recruited by Master Wu to become one of the ninjas. Unlike the more casually dressed ninjas, Kai is in a kendo outfit complete with armour, kendo helmet and a pair of wooden swords. At first glance, I thought Cole's accessory was the same that we got with the Series 3 wrapper. But looking closer, it actually has an iPod printed on it as opposed to a slot for cassette tapes. We get another Lloyd in the series, this time in his green ninja getup. Nothing particularly special of note here, but it's nice that they've included his regular hairpiece as well as his mask. He also comes with a cool printed tile which appears to be part of a blueprint for his green mech dragon. 
suggesting that we will see the mechs get constructed during the course of the movie. This might be my second favourite minifigure of this series. I love her huge OTT glasses, which remind me a lot of Robin from the Lego Batman movie. Although, this time round, they are printed on her head as opposed to attached to her hairpiece. Speaking of that movie, we can see she is a fan as under her lab coat she is wearing a Batman t-shirt. These two minifigures I've bundled together as there's not a lot to say about them. They are the same minifigures we've already seen in a couple of sets, but it's pretty cool that Lego have included them here so fans can build their army. I think this might end up being the most sought after minifigure in this series. Essentially a recolouring of the Harley Quinn minifigure from the Ultimate Batmobile set, this design plays homage to J-pop and quasi culture. In a cool reference to the first Lego movie, she also has a Unikitty shirt and comes with a pink teddy bear accessory. Overall, I really like this series. 20 characters is a lot to collect them all, but I'm glad that they included all the main characters. You can easily assemble all the ninjas, Garmadon and Master Wu without having to buy a bunch of expensive sets. On the flip side, I would have liked a bit more variety and some ordinary Ninjaku City citizens. The Shark Army Octopus, Angler Fish and Great White Minifigures are great army builders, but it feels like a wasted opportunity to introduce more oriental character types in the series like the Sushi Chef, especially as we get three different versions of Garmadon. What are your thoughts on this minifigure series and which figures are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Laters.